Welcome to this special feature from Total Eclipse DFW. Today we sat down with Deb Ross, publisher and CEO of KidsOutAndAbout.com and BeyondTheNest.com, co-chair of the American Astronomical Society's National Eclipse Task Force and chairperson of the Rochester Eclipse Task Force to talk about the upcoming total solar eclipse in DFW on April 8th. Thank you, Deb, for sharing your insights with us. Why do people say experiencing a total solar eclipse is life-changing? Yeah, and so I went into the 2017 eclipse a complete skeptic, um, thinking, what's the big deal? The moon goes around the earth, the earth goes around the sun, it gets dark every night. I know what a shadow is. Um, so, so what? So it gets dark for a few minutes in the middle of the afternoon. But in 2012, five years before the 2017 eclipse, my daughter, who was then 11, came home from a planetarium class that her a middle school had been to and was just completely electrified and said, mom, in five years, I'll be 16, we'll have, I'll have my license and we are going to take a road trip to Missouri to the great American eclipse that's going from Oregon through the middle of the country down to South Carolina. And uh, we'll do that in August of 2017. I said, okay, darling, sure we will. Because what 11 year old plans for something five years down the road? But my kid is an astronomy kid. And so she had you know, the, the director of the planetarium had conveyed to them, not just that that was a special thing for them, but also that when they were an adult in 2024, they would need to come home back to Rochester, New York to experience totality here. So that it was like both parts of the story. So we did, of course, drive to Missouri in August of 2017. And um, I was still a skeptic when we landed in St. Louis. In fact, St. Louis is outside the path. It's at 99%. But St. Louis was on fire with eclipse fever. And there was so much going on that I said to Ella, maybe we should just stay in St. Louis. But she said, Mom, I've been planning for this for five years. We have driven hundreds of miles. You think I'm going to stay outside the path of totality? I said, well, it's 99% coverage. 99% is not totality. Okay, whatever you say. And I was still a skeptic until the next day during totality when as the moon started to cover the sun, and of course we're watching it through approved solar filter glasses because the only time you can look at an eclipse is during the totality moments. Before that, at the in, in the partial phases, you wear your glasses. Totality, you take them off, but then you wear them again for the, the rest. Anyhow, I started to watch the moon crossing the sun. And I started to understand what this was about because you feel the solar system with your whole body in other, the only other way you experience this is with your brain, reading books, seeing videos. Okay. It's nothing like being in totality. Um, as 99% goes to totality, it's only in that last 1% of coverage when you really start to notice the world around you changing. It kind of has been changing the quality of the light. It goes um, when you, when it's about 85% covered, your your eyes have dilated somewhat. So there, there's still tons of light outside and you experience it as day, but your eyes have responded. And so you, it, it feels just like day, but it's only in that last one minute when the moon fully covers the sun and it goes dark. It's like a, this, it's whoosh. So you could see what, well, without the sound effects, of course, but you could see why um, pre-scientific people would have, been very afraid because this is all of a sudden, it's not a gradual darkening. And then at totality, for that minute and a half that I was in totality, you could see, you could see the stars come out around the sun. You could see the Corona glow all around the moon. You see it's midnight blue. It is like deep twilight around you and all around the horizon. It's like a sunset glow of red and gold. You see you feel celestial mechanics with your whole body. And as far as I was concerned for that minute and a half, there were only four bodies in the entire universe, the sun, the moon, the earth, and me. Not even Ella, who was on the other side of the car. If I looked over at Ella, I could have seen her because it's not really dark. It's, it's just sort of dusk. Um, and the, I came out of that 
transformed. I, you know, sometimes they say when you look up at the stars, you feel the insignificance of human beings. My experience was exactly opposite. I felt the significance of myself as a body in that universe and able to understand it. I also experienced a little bit, I think as a mother, the kind of deep fear that mothers in a pre-scientific era would have felt if that suddenly happened. The thing that you depend on for your existence to protect your children, to help everybody live is suddenly gone and you don't know if it's coming back. So I felt that. Um, Ella's story is a different story. She was a teenager, she wasn't a mother and she just loved how this is predictable by humans, that we can predict down to the second where this is gonna happen. And she sees that as a huge triumph of humans. I'm not gonna argue with her about that, but that's fundamentally her take on it. And mine is somewhat different. And you'll see, both of you, you will come out of totality with your eclipse story. Everybody will have their own unique story. Every community also has its own story. And, you know, and the country, our country will have its own story. It's going to include the weather and it's going to include traffic and it's going to include all the things that people did to prepare for it and to celebrate it and to sort of be steeped in that experience in whatever community everybody's steeped in.